So I wanted to talk about uh, brushes that we use. In a painter's toolkit, you're gonna have five brushes, basic brushes. Um, you're gonna have a, an interior trim brush. They're all gonna be labeled. You're gonna have an oil brush, an uh, exterior brush, interior walls for cuttings, and then a, a dust brush. We'll kind of walk through each one of these and why they're different. Um, interior walls. It's a three inch angle sash, clear cut, uh, pretty brush. It's a mix of nylon and polyester. So um, we would go with the clear cut in this situation because the bristles are somewhat soft for cut-ins. Um, when we're cutting in and we're using say like an eggshell paint, we don't, we want to reduce the amount of brush strokes as, as much as possible, but we don't want a, a brush that's so soft that it really reduces our productivity. So this is kind of a good mix in between the two. Um, and it allows for a nice cut in into the ceiling. Um, you notice that whenever I put a brush back, I'm always going to put it back in the case. I want to make sure the angle, the brush fits in with the angle of the case and get it shut down. You want to make sure that you keep the form of the brush so that you can stay efficient. If you start working with a brush where the bristles are bent, it gets to be really difficult and you start slowing down. Then we have a trim brush. So an interior trim brush would be for like enamel, uh, water-based coatings. Um, it's also going to be a nylon uh, brush and it's going to be softer than the interior brush. The bristles are going to be softer, so we want to re reduce the amount of um, brush strokes as much as possible. And I'll kind of go through an example on this piece of drywall, what, uh, what the difference is when you're brushing something out with a, a really stiff brush versus a, a softer brush, and what those um, brush, brush marks look like. Then we have an oil brush. Um, this is a brush that we got from Hirschfield's Commodore Plus. It is um, a white china bristle brush, so it's a natural bristles. You wouldn't want to use this brush for latex paints. This is only for oil. If you use it for a water-based material, it's going to ruin the brush. Um, so it's natural bristle. It, it holds oil well. It cleans well with mineral spirits or paint thinner. Um, so only, only oil for this brush. And with the other brushes, they might say for all paints, but really we just want to stick to uh, latex paints for those. We have our exterior brush. I'm using the uh, Pro Extra. It's a rigid, it's a, it's a stiffer brush. It's three inch. It's a straight sash. So the, some of these brushes are going to have a straight sash. Some are going to have an angle sash. Um, that's kind of preference. Uh, I personally kind of like using a straight edge versus an angle, but I've noticed it with some uh, for cut-ins, for walls, and up into ceilings. Some people like the angle sash a little bit better. It helps them get a, a nicer line because you have that point to work with. Um, this brush is nice because it's nice and stiff. It holds paint really well, and it's pretty durable. That's why we want to use it for exteriors. And lastly, we have our dust brush. Now these are brushes that have been retired uh, because they've been damaged. So it might be because it's just, it's lived out its life or because somebody didn't wash it properly. So you could see this a lot of times when the bristles are all twisted. This is somebody that didn't wash the brush properly or didn't store it properly. So if you just stored it in somewhere where the bristles would sit like this, it's going to stay like that over time. So you want to make sure that you use these cases so these br bristles are preserved and you can use it for, for painting. Um, this brush at this point is just used for dusting off trim. We're not going to actually use it for paint. It's just for kind of cleaning, cleaning up before we do paint. So that kind of covers the five main brushes that we use. I'm gonna go over some samples of what that looks like on a piece of drywall for you. Okay, so we're gonna test out this uh, three inch Purdy Pro Extra. 
and then the nylax brush. So we'll do the three inch brush first. Um, this isn't going to be the best example because we're using cashmere and a flat finish. You probably want to use something with um, at least an egg trill or a satin finish to really show it, but we'll do the best we can here. So this brush loaded up. You don't really ever want to load the brush up more than that. I see some people that'll dip it all the way in there, come all the way up here. You're not using this stuff that's up here. So that's not necessary. So I just dip it in, tip it off right there, and then push it out. I'm going to try to put this on fairly heavy. So you can see the brush marks, and the brush marks are a little bit spread out. It's because the brush has thicker bristles and um, it's not as soft, so the brush marks are, are, are visible, but um, it's not too bad. And they can be kind of minimized by the amount of pressure that you put on the brush at the end. So I'm kind of tipping this off by taking the, the brush from one end to the other, um, versus if you have it all loaded up and you just go like this and that's it. You're going to have a little bit of unevenness, it's a little bit thicker right there, and the bristles are more pronounced. So I'll do the same thing with this brush here. Softer bristle, something that's not going to be used necessarily for production, but when you're doing enamel and stuff like that, it's going to give you a nicer finish. So very, very little brush marks here. Um, because it's a softer bristle. Go over to this one. See, there's quite a bit more brush marks. So that's why we would use this brush for interior trim, enamel, cabinets if we're brushing rolling boxes. Um, and then we're going to be using, you know, this brush. You know, pull back. This brush for interior walls, exterior stuff like that. Something that's a little bit faster. Something that's more rigid. It's a little bit easier to get cut ins. Uh, you know, corners and stuff like that cut in faster. So that's, uh, that's the example of these two brushes and uh, kind of show you about cleaning next. Okay, so now we're gonna go over general care of the brush and washing and we'll get into washing it here in a little bit. But um, let's say that you're working outside and it's a real hot day out. You do not wanna leave a brush sitting outside. Um, it'll dry, the bristles will dry up super quick. And then if they do, they're gonna glue together and it's gonna be really hard to, to wash. You're gonna to have to use a lot of force, and you're probably gonna start damaging the bristles, which is gonna make it harder to use as a tool and to cut in. Um, it's also kind of the case in the winter, if the humidity is real low, even though you're working inside, you don't have to worry about sunlight, humidity is real low, the, the bristles are gonna dry out real quick. So if you're not actively using the brush, you know, bring it, putting it in and out of paint and using it, or possibly storing it inside of a, a can, you know, you. If I'm using a cut brush, I probably don't have much more paint than this in there. So I may be able to rest it inside there. If it's more than that, I'm probably gonna rest it on top. And if I'm gonna be, if I'm not gonna use this brush for more than a couple of minutes, then I'm gonna wanna wrap it up so I don't um, get these glued together and start drying so that I don't, I don't have that problem where I damage the bristles. So I would just rip off some plastic here. Get it wrapped around the uh, ferrule here all the way around, fill it up, hold it over, and that would probably be fine if I'm just using it throughout the day, otherwise I would wrap that around with tape, and then if I'm, gonna, if I'm working inside someone's house or I'm working um, out in an exterior and I know I'm coming back to the shop at the end of the day, I can plan on washing this brush when I get back to the shop because it's a little bit easier than using like a hose. Um, I'd really pr probably prefer that we don't wash brushes inside someone's house unless we're, unless you have to and you're changing colors. Um, often then you can hopefully use a utility sink at the customer's house, otherwise, you know, we may have to use whatever sink is available to us if we're going through multiple colors. But if we're just, say, doing one color on the interior of your house and we come back to the shop at the end of the day, just wrap your brush up and put it back inside the case. And know that you have to you have to wash this um, at the end of the day. So you bring this back with you back here, and then and then we get it washed. So just make sure that you take care of the brush 
and it's going to make it so that you're more productive uh, and it's going to make work a little bit more fun to use the tools that are, are well capped and, and not damaged. So we'll go over real quick how to uh, wash a brush.